I got this passport in 2010. I was going to try out for several Canadian League football teams and so I wanted to make sure I had a passport just in case and I knew it was a long shot. I knew the odds were definitely stacked against me but I had to had to try. You know it had been a dream since I was a little boy to play professional football and obviously the NFL would have been the ideal but I, you know the CFL would have been pretty cool too and so yeah I tried and I went to several tryouts, tried out for several different teams. Uh, I got invited by one team to come to multiple tryouts. They wanted to take another look a couple times. And so that, that felt pretty cool. But uh, ultimately, nothing worked out. And that was tough. You know, even, even when you know something is a long shot, even when you know it's probably not going to happen, there's still hope, especially when it's been a dream or goal for a long, long time. There's still this wonder of what could be. And so when it didn't work out, that was hard. And so this, this passport, which originally represented hope, ended up being just kind of a symbol of failure, symbol of what could have been, but what never came to be. And so I put it in a drawer for a long, long time, and I just didn't think about it. But then fast forward a few years, and I'm working at a church in Atlanta, and I'm in charge of their domestic missions and working a lot with people experiencing homelessness and, and all sorts of really cool things that were going on in the, in the city to help people. But my boss, he was the guy that did all the international stuff. So he took teams and you know mission trips to Kenya and India and Honduras and all over the world. And I was always excited for him to go do that. You know, you go have fun over there and I'll hang out here. But then he was leading this team, or gonna lead this team to Honduras. And, you know, they'd been preparing for months and months, and there was this team of like, I don't know, 30 people, 25, 30 people. And three days before they left, he had a family emergency pop up, and he had to back out. And so he got the phone call at the church and, uh, you know, finding out, oh, hey, you gotta go do something else. And he walked over to my desk right after he hung up the phone, and he said, hey man, what are you doing next week? And I was like, mm-mm. No, 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 I'm, I am not going to Honduras. I know what you're doing, I know what you're about to ask, and no sir, I have no desire <laughs> to leave the country. I don't know where Honduras is on a map. I don't know a single person that's on this team that you're in charge of. I, I don't know the language. They play the wrong kind of football over there. They don't have Chick-fil-A, like, no thank you. I'm, I'm good, I'm perfectly happy staying here in Atlanta. But then he got a little serious and he said, hey man, I'm not asking. I'm telling you, go pack a bag, write a sermon, you leave in a little less than 72 hours. Okay. <laughs> and I was not exactly excited about it. Um, and I remember getting ready to go and being kind of reluctant and putting everything together and getting on the bus 5.30 in the morning, the morning that we left. And I remember getting on there and introducing myself to all these people that I am now in charge of. And you know, they were all excited, they were all happy, they were all ready to go. but. I just remember leaning my head up against the, the window of the bus and just thinking, God, this better be a cool trip. And we were off. Later that day, we arrived in Honduras at the orphanage where we were going to be working for that week. And the next morning, I met the woman that I am now married to. And she's also from Alabama. I had to go to Honduras to meet a girl from Alabama. We grew up pretty close to each other just right up the road. Our high schools played each other in sports. And so, all of a sudden, this passport meant hope again. It meant something new. And I just look back on it thinking, you know, I got this for a very specific reason. And then that didn't work out. But then that one little thing, this one little booklet, turned into, excuse me just for a second. Thank you so much. Yeah, keep the change. Mmm, smells good. What are we talking about? Oh, little things. Mm. Luckily, I got dominoes. So I'm a big fan of 
time travel stories. I just find it so fascinating, the idea that you could go back in time and have adventures. But one thing I find really interesting about those stories is how people are so concerned, so afraid, that they're gonna go back in time and change something small, something insignificant. They're gonna step on a cockroach or accidentally crush a butterfly. And then that's gonna have this huge impact on the present. You know, you stepped on the bug and now the ending of World War II is different or something crazy like that. But what is super interesting to me is how people don't think about that in the terms of now. Like, what does it look like to do something small in the present that then drastically changes the future? And unfortunately, a lot of times we get so caught up on our failures and things that didn't work out the way that we hoped that they would, and then we miss out on life. We become paralyzed, where we're just playing out these scenarios of what if or what could have been, and we forget to actually go out and live. And so my encouragement to you today is to just get back up, keep trying, keep putting together a bunch of little things, little choices, little decisions, little habits, and then see what happens. And no matter how you failed or what bad things have happened, maybe something that you see as failure, it's what leads to something pretty special. And maybe it turns out to be the biggest blessing of your life.